So today I'm delighted to say that I'm in conversation with Sam Wilson. He's the author of Lend a Hand. And Sam lives in Brighton with his wife, two children and their dog Churros. Having grown up in the verdant Sussex countryside, he settled in Brighton due to its real proximity to the lovely sea as well as the South Downs. So when he's not writing children's books, he can be found paddle boarding, can you believe, in the English Channel or working on a number of charity work that he does with babies born prematurely. His debut book is a delightful book and that's why we're here chatting about it. It's called Lend a Hand and it's the first in a series promoting inclusion and diversity. So great to see you, Sam. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Sue. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. Now listen, tell me and tell the, the viewers, how did it all begin? How did your journey start? That's a very good question. So I think it would go back quite a while to probably the age of four or five for me. Um, I yeah. always had a love of, of, of writing, um, a love of reading as well. I, I remember my kind of favourite moments were climbing a tree and reading a book as a kid. I just loved yeah. books. Yes. Um, and I remember writing a lot of poetry as well as a kid. And then as you get older, you kind of fall away from that a bit. And then it was only really in the last the last five years or six years that uh, they sort of sprouted up again, which was which was lovely to see. And now it's reawoken the kind of the dormant scribe in me. And it's like, oh, I need to do more of this. So it was a really nice exercise to get back into it. And uh, I think the the trigger was actually my illustrator, um, David, who, who suggested, look, you're quite good with the words. I'm quite good with the pictures. Why don't we bring those two together and, and see what we can create? So that's really where it all came from. Oh, the Bernie and Elton of the written word. For kids. <laughs> Something like that, I think. Yeah, you can go down that road. <laughs> no, but it's lovely, isn't it, to come together and do that. And I mean, the story is so lovely. Tell us about Lend a Hand. I mean, it's a really lovely story about overcoming adversity and, you know, lending a hand and helping. And it, it has a bit of a message for children, too, doesn't it? Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah. So the message, as the, as the title of the book um, outlines, is about lending a hand and how if you help other people, that makes the world a better place. Because no matter what position we are in life, everyone needs a, a bit of help from someone at some point. Right. And it doesn't matter if you're a fully abled person, if you're a disabled person, no matter what walk of life you're in, everyone can help each other out. And as my young daughter is a wheelchair user, hence why they, the main character, you know, the rabbit is in a wheelchair. That's where the kind of the, the notion came from. And she herself is a very um, giving, helpful person. So she sees somebody who's upset or needs support, she'll be the first person to go and help them. And that's a really beautiful human attribute to have. So that's the reason we wanted to kind of push that as the, the main theme within the book. Oh, I love that because children then can see themselves in the stories as well, can't they? And they can identify with it. And it's not just about that, that you're in a wheelchair. It's about the story. And it just so yeah. happens that you're in a wheelchair too. And I love that idea that the story carries it forward, but you're including and you've got diversity in there too. How old is your daughter now? She's eight now. How wonderful. How lovely. Yes. So tell us then, the inspiration came from her, did it, do you think? I think I think so. Yeah. I mean, the book is centered yeah. around this notion of of um, it is centered around disability, but we work very hard to make the fact that the disability is not the central theme of the book. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, we had um, it recently got picked up in Greece and was put in as a live stage performance there. And one of the yes, reviewers, so it's, I know, it's really, really? Random, uh, but one of the reviewers who's quite quite senior in the educational world in Greece, she yeah. was amazed by the fact that she didn't realize this whole story would be about helping others with no reference to the person in the wheelchair itself and she found that a very powerful yes. and message so yeah we're, we're glad that that came through and resonated that was a really important element we wanted to we wanted to get across yeah I mean what's the age range do you think I mean obviously younger children have it read to them but yeah. where did you sort of have in mind when you were writing it we had this kind of like three to five year old parents reading this to their kids. And that's another challenge I'm sure every writer has, right? If you're doing a children's book, it's got to appeal to both kids, but also to parents. Because yes, no parent yeah. wants to sit and read the 50 page book at bedtime. They want something that can, it's kind of short and sweet and engaging and easy to read and fun to read. So that was kind of another level of consideration when writing it. But so yeah, age range to be read to is three to five. 
but we know stories um parents we know whose kids are now seven eight nine and it's still their go-to reading book at bedtime so it's got quite yeah. a broad appeal i think which is lovely no i love that and i'm a great believer in books can be something that you know starts big conversations with little people so you read the story and then you could have a little chat around some of the things that it's talking about which i think just think is a lovely way to introduce children to kindness or whatever else you want to talk around with the story uh, absolutely yeah and kids uh, approach call it sensitive subjects like disability so differently to adults and we've seen this with um with our daughter taking her to school she'll be in a wheelchair and kids also why is she in a wheelchair and parents will instantly go no no don't say that but it's yeah. like the kids are literally asking you questions. Yeah. yeah okay and then then can I have a go in it? So yeah, of course. Yeah. Can. And it's just fun and engaging. It, I think it's us as adults yes. that create this kind of yes. this sensitive barrier about it. But it shouldn't be that way. It should be an open felt conversation because people with disabilities are part of this world and that's how it is. Yeah, and kids are not being rude. They're being curious a lot of the time, aren't they? It, exactly, yeah. It's just, well, what is that? I want to know. Can I play on it? How does it work? That's all they want to know. Yeah, exactly yeah. that. Yeah. So tell us then more about those lovely illustrations. <laughs> yeah, that, that was all, all David. He's a very, very talented um, uh, illustrator. And when we when we first put the book together, we wrote it in um, 2020 over lockdown. So we did it right. over Zoom, which is no yeah. mean feat to do that when you're yes. at the time we're in a two bedroom gardenless flat with the kids in lockdown and a dog. Uh, oh. Our daughter was shielding heavily because of uh, yes. being on the vulnerable list. So, yeah. yeah, that was an intense, intense creative experience, shall we say. Um, and we originally launched it on Kickstarter to um, to raise funds for two local charities down in Brighton. Uh, one is Amaze, who I volunteer with, and another one is Whoops-A-Daisy. It helps our daughter immensely. Um, so as part of the Kickstarter kind of um, engagement package, shall we say, David had to draw 50 individual people who wanted them as a character in the book. So he yeah. drew them into the book as well. And I mean, I'm, I'm my drawing is kind of like a good stick man. That's my level of drawing. And I can't comprehend how someone can do that. It's incredible. So yeah, the illustrations I think are, are phenomenal. Really, really good. Yeah, well, they come together, don't they? That's the whole lovely joy of it. Because children then, um, I volunteer for Coram Beanstalks and it's um, I, I'm a former deputy head. So it's not about teaching yeah. kids to read. I've done that in the past for 20 odd years. Now it's about enjoying stories and enjoying yes. books. And picture books or even wonderful illustrations just go off on a tangent talking about the pictures. You don't have to read it all the time. So I love that your illustrations can do that. You can just go off and chat about them. And now we know behind the scenes the amount of effort that went into it. It's fascinating, isn't it? It is, yeah. It was. I mean, it's a really interesting exercise to actually put a book together and, and the thought and what goes into it from, you know, I remember spending, I think we spent two weeks deliberating over one sentence about how to write it or where the emphasis should be. And you get so caught up in these kind of minute details. It's, it's, it's a fascinating process for sure. So you wrote it in rhyme. Why was that important to you? Um, because I... I like the challenge of rhyme. I think it's it's really it's a really hard skill to be able to write a story in rhyme that that flows and the rhyme isn't forced in for rhyming sake. Um, yeah. That is a it's a it's a hard exercise to do, and I really enjoyed the challenge of that. And um, and I was a big fan of kind of um, uh, nonsense poetry when I was younger, like the Edward Lear. So yes. I don't know if you picked up the the opening couple of lines of the book are a nod to Edward Lear. So um, oh, I think, yes. yeah, so it's the book starts uh, in the hills of Caratino where the rabbits jump and play. And, that, yes. and if you can remember the Yongi Bongi Bo, I think it is by Edward yeah. Lear. It's yeah, the same yeah. rhyming pattern that we took from that to uh, to drop in there. Wonderful. So tell us then a little bit more about the story. If people haven't seen it yet and they're thinking, oh, what is that lender hand about? Tell us about the characters and the story and how it develops. It won't spoil it. They'll go and buy it, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No spoiler alerts here for sure. So <laughs> it's centered around a character um, called Romy the Rabbit. And Romy the Rabbit takes part in a in a race in the rabbit village of Caratino to get to the top of the hill. And the first rabbit that gets there gets to get the biggest and juiciest carrot on the race. And Romy wants to go up and win the best carrot because she's a rabbit and she loves carrots. But as she's going along, she keeps hearing someone upset on her travels. So she decides to stop and help these people and have these almost little mini adventures with them along the way. But by her helping all these other people, it's getting her further and further back in the race. 
And at the end of the race, all of the people that she's helped along the way, they all come together, push her as hard as they can in her wheelchair, and she wins the race and gets to choose the biggest and juiciest carrot in Caratino. So there's a lovely message. What do you want kids to take away from the story? I want them to take away that helping others makes the world a better place. Um, and giving something to other people is great because you get something back as well. So it's this this notion of sharing and caring and making the world a better place rather than being it about just you. Yeah, I love that message. And we could do with more of it, couldn't we? So if we it's talk and really teach our kids when they're young, hopefully we can make a small difference. And I think it's really lovely, the story and lovely, the message. So do you go into schools or libraries or festivals or anything with your book, reading it? We're, we're just starting to do that. It was only published in, um, it came out in December last year, so quite quite yeah. recently. So yeah. we've got a few um, local school uh, readings in Brighton lined up, and we're trying yeah. to push out a few more down in um, down in Winchester Way, where David lives, and also in London, where we both work as well. So we're trying to spread, spread our wings on that front. Yeah, yeah. So where can people buy the book and find you on social media? So you can buy it in Waterstones, you can buy it on Amazon. If you just search for Lend a Hand, you'll find it on each of those sites. Um, on Instagram, you can reach myself and David to find out more. David is a handle is at David Ramsbottom and my handle is at a different kind of normal. That's where you can find out more images and stories and all kinds of things like that about us. Oh, that's so lovely, isn't it? So I think also it's in the Sue Atkins Book Club. So if you go and find it, yes. we'll put the links. We'll put all the links to that too as well. But it's just so lovely to hear the story behind the words and how it comes yeah. together, the message for families to have it. It's a joyful little book, and I think families will really enjoy it for years to come. So thank you for talking to me today. Oh, my pleasure, Sue. Thank you very much for having me on.